Good morning. In today's video, I am going to show you how to make homestead style eggnog. Um, one of the biggest concerns that people have about eggnog is the raw eggs. When I first went to make my own eggnog, um, all the recipes I could find called for tempering your eggs, but I had memories of my grandma making eggnog for me and I don't remember her tempering her eggs. I just remember her mixing it all up and handing me a cup. I don't remember that she tempered them in a pot and then had to cool the eggnog. And I didn't remember drinking it warm. So I asked my mom recently and I said, um, would grandma have made her eggnog using raw eggs without tempering them? And she said, oh, absolutely. So I looked in this old Mennonite cookbook and sure enough, there was a recipe in there for eggnog that didn't call for tempering your eggs. So it's faster, it's easier, and a couple guidelines that I use when I am using raw eggs, I don't use store-bought eggs, I only use farm fresh eggs. Um, and then I don't use any eggs that are very dirty or cracked, I just use clean eggs. Now, before you decide that this video is not going to be for you because you're not gonna drink raw eggs, I want you to know that I'm also gonna show you how to temper the eggs so that if you don't have access to clean farm fresh eggs, you can still make this delicious eggnog and you don't have to be worried about salmonella in the eggs. Now, am I worried about salmonella when I'm feeding my family um, this eggnog? No, we also drink raw milk and many people believe that you're gonna get sick from raw milk, um, salmonella, most of most strong healthy people will not even know that they have salmonella salmonella is a threat to younger like babies and people with weakened immune systems or immune deficiencies most people will contract it and not even know they have it because their body and their immune system takes care of it so no i'm not worried about my children or my family and salmonella. But like I said, I will show you how to temper the eggs so that you can make it that way if you like. Um, but before I get into all that, I'm gonna show you a couple clips of how we go get our milk and our eggs here on the homestead to make our eggnog. Good morning. We are headed to the barn to do chores. Is that right, Harrison? It's about 6.30 and it's about 17 degrees. We've got our bucket of warm water for cleaning up Gwen and our milk bucket. And the moon is hanging there in the western sky. And Gwen's somewhere out there in the dark. Come on, Gwen! After Gwen comes into the stall, she waits to be fed while I clean her up and get her ready for milking. The first couple squirts of milk we give to the cats since that milk could contain some bacteria. Harrison, get 
your bucket. Ooh, kitty cereal. Harrison, get your bucket and sit down. Can you reach? Can you see it on your foot? Chapter four. didn't we? Look on the ground before you step. So we got our milk and we got the eggs, Harrison. We got our milk. We got a couple eggs and we can use the eggs from yesterday and then we can make, what are we going to make? Eggs. Eggnog. Then we can make eggnog. Yeah. And the sun's coming up. So we're gonna strain the milk. I have a milk straining disc that I'm gonna put in my strainer. And we're just gonna pour it through there to get any dirt and hair out of the milk. Once the milk has been strained, we pour it into clean glass jars and put it into the refrigerator to cool. When we have more milk than fits into our gallon and a half jars, we put it into cups and have it as a pre-breakfast treat. We often add a little bit of cinnamon and some maple syrup. Okay, now that chores are all done, it's time to make eggnog. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna put our eggs our eggs and our one tablespoon of lemon juice together and then we're also going to add our one half cup white sugar and one half cup maple syrup you can use more or less sugar according to your preference i'm going to add my one teaspoon of vanilla
Oh, and I forgot to get the salt. I'm going to add about a pinch to a fourth a teaspoon of salt. Now I'm going to use my immersion blender and get this real nice and foamy. So here you can tell, this is yesterday morning's milk, so it has separated quite a bit. I've got two cups of cream and four cups of milk here. And you can, I just shake this up and use whole milk, um, but you can use a mixture of milk and cream. Of course, the more cream you have, the creamier your eggnog's going to be. So I need four cups of milk because I had four eggs. So I need to use all of this milk except two cups. So the only thing left to do is add my egg and sugar mixture to my milk mixture. to add my nutmeg. A whole tablespoon of nutmeg. And that's it. Okay, so for the tempered eggs, I have my eggs, sugar, maple syrup, vanilla, salt, and lemon juice in here. And I've got them mixed up real well. Then I'm gonna heat my milk until it's just about boiling. And I will take the temperature of the milk so that I can um, let you know in the recipe exactly how hot your milk should be when it's just about boiling. So here you can see that the milk is starting to form a little bit of a skin on top. This stage is called scalded milk. Now you know that you've scalded it and then once you see those little bubbles come in, then it's time to take it off the burner because it's about to boil over. So as soon as those little bubbles start coming up the side, like that, then you know that your milk is hot enough. And it looks like, yeah, it's about 130 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is called tempering your eggs. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a little bit of this milk at a time and I'm gonna whisk it into the, little bit of the hot milk and whisk it into the cold eggs. You're trying to bring the eggs up to the same temperature that the milk is. Now that you've got your egg mixture up to temperature, you can add it to the hot, rest of the hot milk. Now, 
I'm gonna turn my burner to low and we're gonna continue heating this until it's slightly thick. And I'm gonna switch out my wire whisk here. just going to keep stirring this over low, low heat until it starts to get a little thick. And we're going to know it's done when it starts coating the back of this spoon. Now when I make eggnog like this, it goes from, in my opinion, being a highly nutritious snack and beverage for my children to a holiday treat. The benefits of raw eggs, lots of vitamins and minerals that are beneficial for growing children and anybody that wants to maintain their health. Now I know there's strong recommendations against raw eggs, but yes, that's for store-bought eggs and people that have a compromised immune system. When I make the eggnog with raw milk and raw eggs, it packs a powerful nutrition punch for my children. Whereas this turns it more into a treat. So we're heating it. That will um, cook the eggs. So the eggs are no longer raw. And my milk is also no longer raw. So with the heating, I've pasteurized the milk, and now I'm cooking the eggs, which kills any chances of salmonella, salmonella in the eggs. It's beginning to coat the spoon. You can see how it's getting a little thicker. And it kind of coats the back of that spoon and doesn't run off right away. So if it was running off right away, the spoon would look clean like that. So I say it's done because it's coating the back of the spoon. The spoon is not running off clear. And I'm gonna take its temperature again, just so that we can know. Now all we've got left to do is stir in our tablespoon of nutmeg. Now this will take about half a day, about six hours to cool. Um, my children in the past have not minded um, drinking this a little warm, um, but now that they're used to me making the homestead style eggnog, I do not know if they would accept warm eggnog because um, they're used to the cold. But I'm going to put this in the refrigerator. And again, this is definitely the method I would use if I did not have access to farm fresh eggs that I know come from a clean coop and healthy chickens.